Hello and welcome to Inspiring Talks. My name is Alexander Toflidis and today I'm joined by a very, very special guest. I have Olympic champion and world champion, Danieli Grotza. Danieli, welcome. Hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Fine, you? I'm good, I'm good. We've had a, a long week of training. Yeah. Uh, how, how are you feeling? Good, good. In this moment uh, I'm training, but I'm starting to as I say, uh, going up in my preparation for the Olympics, it's a long way to uh, the end of July, so yeah. now we have to slow down to increase the speed at the end. Yeah. Up momentum, yeah. So the first question that the viewers at home would love to know is, yeah. how did this journey all start? How did you start fencing? It's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a little bit casualty, but uh, at the same time, it's a family story. Because uh, in Acireale, the city where I was born, uh, a friend of us, a friend of us, opened a fencing gym, a fencing goal, and uh, he said to my brother, that uh, is uh, three, three years older than me, uh, "Why don't you try? Why don't you try fencing?" And uh, he started like that. Yeah. And uh, the year after, I said, "Okay, I want to go do sports with my brother." And uh, I started. And in the moment I started, I really feel like, uh, you know, a reporter when he, when he gets the wand uh, at Olive Anders and pff, all the light gets down. I feel almost like that way. I really fell, uh, fell in love immediately. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm uh, super talented, but I felt in the same moment that I started that uh, uh, I know the, how does it work yeah. this. Uh, and uh, it was a special day. I remember it. Really? How old were you when you started? Six. You Six years old. Six. Wow. Yeah, I remember it perfectly. Yeah. And your brother Enrico, he is doing epi. He's Olympic yeah. medalist. Yeah, and yeah, you exactly. did foil. So how how is this? <laughs> how has he done epi and you've done foil? I joke on that because I say everyone that does that does epi starts with foil. But yeah. if they are bad, they go on epi. <laughs> <laughs> so he started with foil. As he well. started, yeah, he started with foil as well. But yeah, you know, it uh, it depends. Of course, uh, in my gym in Acireale, everybody was epi. Everybody. Yeah. And uh, I was uh, very good in foil, so I said, why well, I have to change? change the, they, they asked me, they, oh, why don't you change your pair? I said, no, I prefer foil and I keep going. Yeah. And so, so you've, you grew up in Sicily. Yeah. So uh, now you're here in Rome. It's, it's a very different uh, Sicily. What's the life in Sicily like, you know, growing up and with the fencing? It's totally different, of course. And uh, I mean, uh, it's very different for fencing. For other things, it's uh, similar, yeah, uh, you know, for school and life. Uh, uh, Sicilian life is very good. Yeah. It's slow, good it's weather. very yeah, cool weather, slow, <laughs> calm, people are relaxed, uh, there is the sea, if you have to do, yeah, okay, but you can work and then go to the sea to relax. Here it's a little bit more uh, rush, no? like, uh, you know, you live in London, so mm -hmm. you can yeah. understand. But for fencing, Frascati, it's uh, yeah. like in paradise, That's no? Good, yeah. yeah, when I started and uh, all the way down through my 18s, from when I was 18, I had to really struggle to train, really struggle. Yeah, 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 it was very, very, very hard because uh, there were no foil. There were no, there was no foil. I was the only one, the only one foilist in my gym, and in all Sicily there were not so much foil. So you know you have to do really big stuff to train, and uh, almost all my trainings I was alone. And I had to train with, uh, how to say, uh, like uh, the one that in the mall they, they get dressed. W w what's the name of that thing? The, the, the fake man. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, straw, uh, like, yes, the, yeah. the dummy. dummy. Yeah, the dummy, the dummy, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, 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 wear, I wear, I give him a jacket and I fence yeah. with the dummy. And, uh, you know, it was hard. Well, I think that's incredible. And for maybe some of the recent viewers, uh, so for fans of fencing, you know, so you had no one to train with, you say, but. You at 17, year old, 17 years old, you were training in, in Sicily. Yeah. And you were cadet world champion. Yeah. <laughs> we so with no sparring partners, no you sparring, were... Yeah. Because I remember you in the semi-final, you fenced with one of my uh, good friends, Hussein Rosowski. Yeah, yeah. And I remember him telling me this experience is unbelievable. He's, t tell me about that, because it's interesting those moments maybe give you motivation. I remember him saying, I couldn't believe it. He was like in a football stadium. It was like, it was like the whole crowd was shouting Danny Garozzo. Yeah, and he yeah, was, yeah. Uh, tell that, me about that because... Uh, that, that, that was one of the most special moments of my career. Even yeah. like, almost like Rio. Almost yeah. like Rio, really. Because, you know, uh, competing in a world championship in your home, at your yeah. city, your hometown. It was, it was crazy. All my friends there, uh, there were like uh, my almost 1,000 uh, people. 
Yeah. Ten hundred thousand. No, ten hundred thousand people. Yeah, ten so, thousand. Yeah, ten yeah. thousand people. Uh, you, you can imagine how big house was the situation. You know, Paris. You you know Paris. I was yeah. it, and it was even more than Paris. So it was crazy, and uh, it was it was nice. Yeah, I remember it perfectly. It was really a special moment with my family, with my friends. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that that's amazing, and and it's interesting because a lot of the time. Uh, you know, different people are co complaining. They might not have the s fences sparring partners. Yeah. But, you know, you were able to achieve that result without those fences. So it leads on to my other question. When you were younger, I mean, who do you put down your development to when you were growing up? It's a nice question. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it was hard, but I, I had the, the opportunity to train because my family supported me a lot in that moment. It, Without them, with my, without my parents uh, uh, that uh, really helped me, it was uh, almost impossible. And uh, I, 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 don't, I did like uh, uh, many sacrifices, like for example, uh, two times per week uh, with my father that makes sacrifice with me. Uh, he gets me to Modica, where there was a quite good gym. Uh, Abor, no, wasn't there mm -hmm. already, wasn't there already because he already moved uh, here to Pisa, he was in Pisa and Livorno, but there were fencers, there were like uh, four, five, six fencers, and, but it was one hour and a half from my home, yeah. and my father, so he has to start, to start his job, start his work uh, one hour and a half before, and one hour and a half before to take me there and then get back home, yeah. so it was, uh, it was really hard, these two times per week. And uh, the other days, like we did uh, crazy things, but uh, that uh, that now I smile uh, at uh, remembering at it because it seems me so so far away. But uh, they are really the best memories I have in fencing. Like uh, a friend of mine, that he was almost a coach, not a real coach, but he was almost a coach. Uh, he was Cuban. He is Cuban, and uh, he he knows fencing not so much, but yeah. not so not so bad. And uh, he used to come to my house to train me, and he gets uh, he has the jacket, the fencing fencing jacket, but he has no uh, the plastron, no. Yeah. So all the all the time I touched him, it was uh, was hard. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Bruce, so I give him a, a whole coat of mine, yeah. and we, we used to I used to do like the sparring partner that yeah. he makes like movement to make me fence to make me try all the stuff that I want to do. And he was there with this cold coat to try to, to do something. And uh, you know, this, is, this was training for me. And uh, I don't know how, but uh, it worked. <laughs> but I think that's a really good lesson that people can learn because I think a lot of time fences and humans always want to look for an excuse. Ah, we don't yeah, have yeah. the correct coach. We don't have the correct yeah. facilities, but you have to make it happen. And, like, yeah, exactly. and you did, and you gave yourself the chance to then uh, make that next step yeah, exactly. and then to come and train. So, so yeah. when did you decide to move uh, from From Sicily, Sicily to here? Yeah. I was 18. I was 18. It was the last year of school. And uh, you know, this situation, as you said perfectly, gave me the opportunity to take the second step. And uh, I, when I had the opportunity, I did it when I entered the army. Because, you know, in Italy it works in this way that if you are good enough, you enter the army that they pay you to do fencing. Mm. So in the same year that I entered the army, I moved here. And uh, I did the last year of school in Frascati. It was hard at the beginning, of course, because uh, uh, 18 years old, you are not uh, so young, but uh, not so old. Yeah. So you have to manage your life alone. And uh, it wasn't easy, but uh, I, I remember it like a nice period of growing myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, even more than growing my fencing. I grow, I grow myself as a person and uh, it was nice, yeah. Yeah. So you completely like left your family, new yeah. school, new everything. Everything, yeah. And uh, then, okay, so you've been here since 18 years old. Now you're 27, so you've been here for nine years. 10 years, 28. T uh, 28, ah, 20, sorry, yeah, sorry. No <laughs> 20, yeah, 10 years. This is the, le the 11th year that 11th I'm here. 11th year. Amazing. And, and, and what did you find the difference when you arrived in terms of the fencing? How did you... It was totally different. Of course, yeah, as you, as you know, as you see, it wasn't as good as now. It wasn't as good as now because now it's, it's really crazy, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, there are maybe 30 fencers that can do final in a World Cup, so it's mm -hmm. crazy now. But when I came here the first time, it was 2011, yeah, uh, it was very good. It was very good because Aspromonte was very, very strong, Simoncelli was uh, at his best, uh, Ramacci, Barrera, they were top fencers that could do podium in a World Cup. 
and of course uh, training with them all the days uh, give me a, a boost in my fencing and I improved a lot immediately. Of course it wasn't easy to uh, change my fencing because this is a chapter by itself Fabio, Fabio Galli, my coach, uh, of us to do, us to deal with a fencing that was almost rudimental, you know. I, wa I was good in something and I, I think that I can say I was talented but uh, my fencing was really ru rude. Mm -hmm. I was basically, I was basic in my fencing and he has to create and to uh, restart almost from the beginning. So it took like uh, two, three years to achieve that, uh, that, that our goal and uh, yeah, he did a great, really good job. And it's really interesting, very, you mentioned Fabio Gali and I've been training here for three months and watching him work and I see the really great relationship he has with his fencers. Yeah. Uh, maybe an obvious question, but how important is it, the coach and offensive development? I mean, and I'm not just talking on the piece, I mean, you know, it's a great coach on the piece, but, but the whole thing, how is that important for the fence? It's super important. Of course, it's super important. Fabio, especially, like I, I can say about my, uh, my personal experience, Fabio, it, it's like a second father to me. When I came here, as you said, and I, I, as, I did, I was, as I did, I was alone and uh, uh, he really take care of me outside of the piece, even more than inside of the piece, no? He gave me all the, all the lessons that I needed at the moment, uh, not just in fencing, and uh, yeah, I, I owe him a lot. I yeah. really owe him a lot, yeah. yeah. I think that's important as well because, you know, that pe you know you, it's, there's so much more things than just that fencing on the piece, so the psychology and this kind of thing, and, Especially you came from a different, not a different country, a different place. Almost, almost, <laughs> almost. <laughs> a, a, a similar, you know, a, a different kind of culture. Yeah, so that's yeah, really yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, I actually remember your father. You mentioned your father just before, yeah. how important he is. And I remember him. He was always at the competition. Yeah, field. yeah, He yeah. was always. And yeah. I remember he, he always was shouting, Vai Dani. I always remember. <laughs> I remember yeah. it was Vai Dani and uh, Dai Edo for... Dai Edo for Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Lubri. <laughs> <laughs> I remember his mom. Yeah, it's, um, true, it's true. So yeah, it's really amazing. And I, uh, he's, you mentioned very important development. And I want to come now to... Uh, some of your greatest moments. So, obviously, we're going to come to this mm. Olympic Championship uh, moment, but I want to talk about that. Uh, you know, so you were cadet world champion, and uh, you've been junior world champion, and you then you came to live in uh, Frascati, 18 years old. How was that development to the senior level? And I want to talk about it because it's a really competitive environment. Italian fence. You have so many fences. How and you see it, many good junior fencers don't make that transition to senior yeah. fencing in Italy. How did you kind of deal with that transition from being a top junior to a top senior? It was very hard. It was very hard and at the beginning I had uh, troubles, of course. When I came out of junior and uh, I did two seasons in, uh, in the senior, but without results. I did like one, one top eight per year. It was not so good and not so bad, but not enough for sure to be in the top four of the Italian team. And uh, it was uh, a big deal, yeah, to make uh, this uh, little step, this little big step to the to the top four. But uh, I worked a lot. This is the uh, the only thing that I can say. I worked really a lot in that period of my life. I really eat, sleep, and doing fencing all the day. And this was uh, this was really the key for uh, the the change. I worked in everything, not just in. Uh, fencing, uh, uh, in that small area of fencing. I worked on my physical training like a crazy. I worked a lot on my mental training with my psychology. St I, I, I did, yeah, a lot of work uh, with video and uh, to change my fencing. In that period, if you remember it, I, I, I understand that this is one of the, I think, the key moments of my career. I understand that uh, uh, there was like a, uh, a situation in uh, refereeing that was not clear. The attack, I think that in that moment, uh, some, referee, some referees did not understand how, how to deal, no? how to manage the uh, attack in preparation or attack no, attack stop. So I tried to make, uh, uh, I, I develop a type of fencing that uh, it was really uh, in the limit of this, yeah. of this uh, situation. 
And uh, I did it. I think I did it really well because now almost all the fans are in the world <laughs> atta attacking this situation, yeah. attacking this way. And uh, yeah, uh, it took me a lot of time and a lot of work. But uh, yeah, in a moment, I I felt like that uh, the momentum was changing. I felt it like in Tokyo, when uh, I did. Uh, it was the, uh, the second top 16 in two competition that I did. And it wasn't so good, but I felt like that uh, I really was uh, um, having no trouble in beating an opponent that uh, in uh, the last year were at the same level of, of mm -hmm. mine. And uh, I was losing like, with uh, Masialas that is younger than me, but at the time he was really, really good. Or uh, sometimes with Jopic, Lei, but every time very close. And then the, the next competition after this two top 16, I like did uh, uh, second in Paris, then third in Cuba, then third in St. Petersburg, almost uh, all yeah. in a row. Oh, yeah, 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 I was going up, up, up. And so, yeah, in that moment, uh, my career changed. And on that, that's very interesting that you saw a, so like a glitch almost, like yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. And did you, so you came up with that yourself? Yeah, 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 yeah. I uh -huh. yeah, work a lot, yeah, yeah, by myself watching videos. But I think that's amazing because, you know, I think uh, a lot of the time we talk about 100% effort. And I think 100% effort is not just on that piece, it's also what you do off That's, the piece, yeah, of you course, know? Of course, and I absolutely. think that you watch a lot of video and also one of my former teammates, you know, Marcus Mepson, who yeah. also managed to make a very good result second best. Yeah. He watches a lot of videos and I think, you know, I watch a lot of videos as well, and I think it's important to put all that, when you say 100% effort, it's not just what you do of course, uh, on, piece. on the piece, but off the piece. The other question I want to ask you is, uh, you know, you're an Olympic champion. We're, we're coming to this moment now to ask about this. But for people at home, you know, when they watch you, you know, you look so confident, always on the piece, off the piece when you're fencing. When you were, when you were growing up, I, another maybe stupid question: Did you have doubts? Did you ever like? Do, do you ever doubt yourself? Yeah, a lot, a lot of time. Of course, uh, uh, when uh, I when I am on piste and uh, or outside the piste. I work even on my confidence, yeah. on confidence. You know, it's not, uh, it's uh, even in, uh, in that kind of uh, mental status, it's a work. Because yeah. you have to doubt many times yourself to be confident. If you have just like, no, this is my fancy, I'm very good at it, I want to be Olympic champion, and you never doubt about yourself, about how do you attack, about how do you, how do you defense, about what do you think of your fencing or your preparation, I think that your uh, your uh, success it's uh, it's almost yeah. impossible, yeah. and uh, yeah, uh, if I look confident in peace, it's because I work it a lot even on that. But I think that's important for like young kids growing up because I think sometimes they think we must be always uh, confident yeah, and yeah, doubt yeah. and and sometimes you have to have this self doubt Absolutely. reflection. You Absolutely, know? Absolutely. So many times, yeah. uh, many times, uh, kids said to me. Uh, how to how to become a champion? How, how to become uh, uh, perfect in fencing and never lose? Uh, so, yeah. okay, okay, it's it's impossible. We lose and we lose yeah. again and again. To to win one competition, I I have lost 100 competition. Yeah. So and, and you know it. Yeah. How, how hard is it? And uh, this is uh, like a, a, a trip you have to do. You have yeah. to do and to go 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 and yeah. never stop. I think that's a really good point that people should uh, take on board. And now I want to go to the Olympic <laughs> season. This is, uh, so, you have the bronze medal in St. Petersburg yeah. in that year, uh, in May. Uh, talk us a bit about that season. Uh, you know, what were you feeling like before the Olympic Games uh, how, in the, in the build-up? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, a nice period of my fencing, but at the same time, and we go back to the question, uh, the previous question, I dubbed. I start doubting because uh, I entered in the team the 2015, okay, and I had really an explosion of results. In 2016, I did well. I was like six at the six or seventh at the at the uh, before the Olympics. Yeah. But I was starting to feel like that uh, I've lost the momentum, like I'm sort of uh, uh, not a stop, but uh, I have to do something new. And uh, in that last period of the seasons with Fabio, we worked a lot. We really worked a lot on another situations of fencing. Like in that moment, I, I felt like that uh, they, they start to appreciate more also the attack, but also the stop and restart a lot. 
and we work a lot on that. And in the middle on and the beginning of the seasons, I wasn't so good at doing it. So also the results take a little bit of decrease, decrease. Yeah. But uh, later on in the Olympics, I I had really a good sensation on it. And uh, even if I'm, I was not so good in pairing, I had that situation in defense that worked, and uh, I used it a lot. That, that, that's interesting. And so then you go into the Olymp so the Olympic Games, uh, the day of the competition. So you fence some really tough matches the whole day through. To be honest, yeah. I think. First match, uh, Alexander Chupinic. No, first match, uh, Ayad. Ayad. Oh, Ayad, Tarek, Ayad, sorry, yes. Tarek, Ayad, Ayad, yeah. Second yeah. match, it was uh, Abul Qasem that was really strong. In that days, it was really, really good. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was hard. It was a, way, a really hard way. Tough match, yeah. yeah, it was tough. And he was obviously a silver medalist from, uh, yeah, from, London. from London. And uh, talk a bit, you know, so uh, during, did you feel confident before, the, on the day of the competition? Did you feel something special was going to happen? Oh. This, this question they, they asked me many times, you know, because uh, like uh, uh, so many kids, but also uh, colleagues of fencing yeah. said to me, uh, when, when they look up at you, when I look up at you in that day, I, I know Daniel will, uh, will won for sure because <laughs> it, it makes me feel like he's, uh, he has superpower he, and he felt it. Absolutely not true. <laughs> I, I wake up, I was scary that I have to do the Olympics. I was like yeah. shaking like that. I went to the, to the competition hall and I vomit for, for the tension. I, I was yeah. really so, so in panic. And, uh, but you know, I, I also calmed myself because I said, I've worked so hard for this. I want to enjoy this moment. And even if I vomited again, I will give all myself to the, to the, in the bout. And uh, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this was amazing. And uh, so do you have any special matches from that day? I, I was going to talk about uh, your match the, with the- all, all the matches were yeah. really special in a, in us in their different way ways, yeah, yeah in different ways yeah because yeah. with the one with the yard was the first match and i was really tense and nervous in a crazy way so i i choose to to be aggressive immediately to attack a lot and uh, it worked he it, it was uh, under pressure he didn't uh, uh, react so well to my pressure in attack so uh, the beginning of the match was really really easy and it ended uh, not so soon, but uh, we were 10-2 at the beginning, so yeah. the, it, it yeah. was, yeah, destabilized did, by did my time. Did that settle your nerves after that yeah. first match? You feel a lot more uh, relaxed? Yeah, I feel a little, yeah, a little bit more relaxed, but I knew that I have to fence the second match with Abul Qasem, that that season he didn't do so well, mm -hmm. but he was the flag bearer of Egypt yeah. in, in the Olympics, and he, um, a friend of mine, Tobia Biondo, that you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, trained with him in that period before the Olympics and said, uh, Allah, Allah is uh, his name, Allah Aldin, it's super trained because he wants to make a good Olympics, yeah, because yeah. he, he is Flaubert, yeah, yeah, he's the yeah. star of Egypt, he wants to make a, a super Olympics. And the, the match before, the previous match, he fenced with Chupanich and he won like 15 6. Yeah, yeah. He was in very good shape. And uh, that match was maybe the, the one that I, have, uh, that I had more trouble because it was 10-6 uh, for him. So, you know, it was a super tough match, but uh, I changed a small thing because he was pushing me, pushing me, pushing me a lot and then uh, make me tempo parade, tempo parade. Yeah, I couldn't stop him. Yeah, and uh, uh, I, I changed a little bit. I said, okay, now I have to go, I have to go, to go uh, in attack. And uh, when I started attacking slow and continue, he felt uh, he lost his momentum and uh, I, I changed the, yeah, I changed the, the match and uh, it was the toughest match of the competition for sure. Because then when I see you fencing in the semi-finals and final, I've watched that match many times, many of the fences at home have, it's, it's just unbelievable. It's just uh, from the outside, your focus, you, the, the execution of the actions, the distance, the timing, just, it's, you know, that some of those touches in the first match with Safin in the semi-final, just, what did you feel like then? I mean, you know, did you, obviously, you know, you've won three matches to get to the semi-final. You know your game plan, you know what you want to do. Uh, when you're in that moment, are you just focusing on the next touch or are you feeling, you know, I'm fencing well? Like, you know, what was your feelings during that match? Cause no, it, I, was, I was really focused so much in, in that two matches, as you said, that uh, I almost uh, was in trance. 
Yeah. I, I, I felt like I was really in the moment. You know, sometimes in sports we talk about it, you know, you feel in the moment, yeah. you, you are in the right flow. And uh, yeah, and I didn't uh, have too much uh, thoughts or concernings or, um, or, s or panic situation. In that two matches, I just feel in the momentum and, and I awesome. let them go. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. stop. And, and do, you, do you know when you're in that moment? Sometimes it happens, yeah, sometimes it happens and uh, in the competition, also not just in the competition yeah. of the Olympics, of course it happened, and, uh, uh, but also to come in that moment, uh, you don't have to chase for it like uh, with uh, anxious situation, no? you know, because uh, you enter in that status when you fence perfectly and sometimes not even uh, uh, in, in, a, in a whole competition that you may win, you cannot enter this status, okay? So it, uh, you, you don't have to chase it with uh, anxious, like, no, no, I'm not feeling perfect, mm -hmm. no. You just have to fence, to focus on what you do, and if you enter in the right way, you have to follow the to wave, yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. And, and is there, so it's interesting, is there, um, is, there, uh, is there stuff that you do, mentally or physically, to get you into that moment to fence? Well, are there any kind of, you know, what pre-competition, is there anything that you kind of do to get in the zone? Yeah, I do a lot of stuff for that. And of course I do it with my psychologist and she teaches me how to, uh, not to enter in the situation, but how to deal with uh, uh, all the uh, external signals that uh, there are in competition that can pulls you out uh, your attention from what you are doing, from what, from where you are. So you know uh, there are uh, uh, there are a lot of words that she says to me. The, to the, we call it anchors to yeah. to stay in the moment. We call it qui ed ora. That means here and now, and uh, it's it's a work. You, you know, it's uh, it's a big work that uh, it takes me two three years with her to. Yeah. Uh, uh, to achieve that kind of mental status and even if sometimes I lose it, I know how to regain it. But it's, uh, it's too big to explain in uh, one moment. No, that's, well, we're going to come back to that point. Yeah. Because I want, that's really important and I want, because I just want to get you to this moment in Rio, that 15th touch yeah. against myself. Yeah. It the was, touch. Yeah. We've seen your amazing celebration. <laughs> What do you feel? 15th touch, that mask goes, what do you feel? You know, it was like, uh, I was so, con so focused and so concentration that when, till, till the moment that I put out the mask, I didn't feel nothing, but when I put out the mask, I, I saw like the lights, no? you know, all the lights in the crowd. I, I didn't hear the crowd all the day, but when I put the touch, so, what, what's going on? Where, where are we? Everybody clapping. I went straight to my father that was there and said, Dai, 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 Dai. <laughs> and we're there celebrating and I said, no, I, it's impossible. I, I, did, I did it. I won it. And uh, yeah, when the, the referee gave me the touch, I felt like, oh my God. You know, it's amazing because as fences, you know, you, you maybe you lose in the quarterfinals, 16, yeah. you lose and you have to do all that. But I mean, the pinnacle of the fencing career is in the Olympic <laughs> Games and you are the Olympic champions. You, you've done it, you know, and I'm yeah, yeah. an Olympic champion, so that must be amazing. And also for your family, because your father, I mean, your father, I mean, he must all those trips to Monaco. Yeah. <laughs> he must have said it was worth it. Because, yeah. uh, also, the next day, uh, the, the later on, your brother also won the Olympic medal. Yeah. So true. he went the Garossa family to the Olympic Yeah, 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 really good. yeah but I want to say one thing, and it's really special, I think, uh, for, for me, for my memories, and uh, even for the one who uh, watches. Uh, I said to my father one thing once, uh, once when uh, on in our way to Modica, and he remembers it even more than the Olympic medals. And he always said this to me, because I said to him, uh, Dad, I don't know if uh, I'm gonna be a good child, a good fence, because I was 17, 18, 16, so it was, I was very young. I don't know if I'm gonna be a champion of fencing, but this time that we spent together, it worked with by itself, because we, we enjoyed, we stayed together, we spent time together. It's not easy. He's a doctor, so he, he worked a lot, and uh, I did like my studies and all the stuff, you know. And with parents, it's not so easy to spend so much time. And uh, that one hour and a half, and one hour after that, it was good because we talk and we, we listen to music. And 
I said to him this thing, and uh, I hope he remembers it all the time with uh, a little bit of tears, no? Of emotion, because I said uh, it was worth anyway. Uh, even if I don't become a champion, it was worth it. Well, that's interesting, and I want to come on to that point there, because uh, you, you said even if you weren't a champion, it was worth it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but you were a also, you want to be successful, and you have been successful. But that's another point is. Uh, you you are also uh, nearly completed, uh, finished to be a, a doctor, and I think what I want to ask you is interesting. Is um, I think that's amazing that you've been able to balance being an Olympic, uh, Olympic champion and to do the medicine, and it's a great thing because I want to ask you. Uh, too many times I hear from parents and this thing, we cut their kids, they can't do sport. They must focus on their study and this thing. And I'm a big believer that. I think sport is a great is great for your studying and for life. So, what skills? First of all, what skills do you think you've learned from fencing that have helped you outside uh, in the rest of your life? Many, many. The first one, for for sure, it's organization. When you have to be an athlete, you have to be organized. For sure, that all the time you must put uh, stuff that you have to do. Every time that you have to do a training, you have to go there and organize by yourself. It's this for, this for sure, organization. Second, sacrifice. When you're, as you know, a professional athlete, many times you have to deal with uh, stress, with uh, fatigue, with, with uh, every kind of, uh, you know, uh, hard stuff that uh, all the athletes goes on in their career. And this for sure you will find when you have to study. Because when you study, and I like a lot what I study, I, like, I love medicine, but uh, when I'm um, at uh, the seven, uh, seventh hour of my studies, I'm tired. I just want to relax. But if I have to do an exam, I will do other three hours. And this I learned by fencing. Because if when I'm tired in my bouts, I do three bouts. And uh, okay, I didn't fence so well, but I knew, I know that I have to do five bouts. I do that two more. And I do it at my best. And this is, well, this is a super special lesson that I learned from fencing. But many others. The, uh, to, uh, to really learn by, uh, from lost, from the, all the loss of all the lose that you get uh, through your career. Uh, many times when you are in, a, in work or in study, you lose something, you, you miss an exam, you, you don't succeed in, uh, in a job, uh, and how to learn it? In, in sports, I think that it's the best school to learn to lose. Yeah. For life, yeah, amazing. Especially in fencing, where there can only be one winner. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And, um, and you lose so many times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's amazing. Da Danny, this has been a really amazing uh, uh, conversation. I have one last question to you. Yeah. Um, if the Danny Garozzo, now in 2021, age 28 Olympic champion, what advice would he give to Daniele <laughs> in Sicily age 10 years old, seven years old, we start fencing. If you could go back, what advice would you give young Daniele? Well, honestly speaking, I don't have a special advice. I would say like my father said to me in all competition, die Danny, enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, that was a very great interview. Danny, thank you very much for thank joining you. us and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Uh, for the Olympic Games Cup in Tokyo. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. See you guys. Thank you. Bye bye.